Hi friends, I'm Miss Kirsten and I am a librarian at Baltimore County Public Library. I normally work on the bookmobile, but today I want to talk to you about what to do if you're feeling nervous about school starting. We know that school is very different this year and there are lots of questions and not all the questions have answers yet. And that can make people feel very nervous. It's hard to relax when you don't know what's going to happen. So I'd like to give you some tips and um, tricks to help you deal with this anxious feeling that is definitely normal and to be expected. And the biggest thing I want you to remember is to talk about your feelings with somebody you trust, with a grown up or a friend. Um, just tell somebody how you're feeling. It's really important because people can't help you if they don't know what's wrong. So let's start by talking about our monkey mind. What is our monkey mind? You see this cute monkey. He loves to swing from branch to branch to tree to tree as fast as he can. Never stopping, chattering, <laughs> just back and forth all day long. And he's a little mischievous and full of energy. Well, in our minds, some people imagine that there's a monkey. And that monkey swings, not from tree to tree, but from thought to thought. So he's going E -e 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 -e. inside of our heads all the time, always talking, always jumping around. And it's fine. It's fine to be a monkey. But what we should do sometimes is invite this little monkey to have a seat and just be calm for a little while. So I'm going to show you some ways that we can do that. All right, monkey. You stay right there while we talk. So first we're going to talk about self care. And you've probably heard this term before. The Oxford dictionary says it's the practice of taking an active role in protecting one's own well being and happiness in particular during periods of stress. And right now is a period of stress. So what can we do for self care? Well, you probably know you can do yoga. You can do meditation. If you do prayer, you can do prayer. Um, and you can practice mindfulness. Mindfulness again, from the Oxford dictionary is a mental state achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment while calmly acknowledging and accepting one's feelings, thoughts, and bodily sensations. So just being aware of how you feel and accepting it. Another thing you can do is Look at pictures of cute kittens and puppies. Sounds silly, but this really helps some people calm down. Another thing you can do is find a cute kitten or puppy to play with. But make sure you ask their human first. Um, this one is going to be really helpful when you're in your virtual classroom. Get a stress ball or a fidget thing to help you 
when you have to sit still for a long period of time and you want to move around. Um, if you don't have any at home, I'm going to show you how to make some very easily with stuff you have laying around, but I'm going to show you a couple examples. These are so cool. You've probably seen these before. The little color drops just go bloop, 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 bloop. Very relaxing. Then you can get one of these really gross squishy balls. <laughs> this is really the grossest thing. <laughs> um. These are cool. It's just like a finger trap, but it's sealed on the ends and there's a marble inside and you can just squish the marble back and forth. This doesn't even make any noise. Nobody would even know if you're on your um, in your classroom and you're just like do 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 do. Nobody would even notice. This one I love. It's a cute little pea pod. What's inside? Oh wait. It's a pea. <laughs> I got a kick out of this one. And then there's two little peas too. And you could just do this all day long. I will probably do it all day long. Um, so those are just some fidget things that you can play with when you're feeling nervous. Um, there are some other things like worry dolls, cute little dolls that you can tell each of them one thing you're worried about then you stick them under your pillow at night and they will do your worrying for you while you're asleep so that you can get a good night's sleep um there's also um, prayer beads or mala beads like these and you can just um count them while um breathing so for each one you go, two, three, or you can um, think a good thought while you count, whatever helps. Um, if your teacher gives you a stretch break, make sure you get up and stretch. Even if you don't feel like you need to, it's good for your body, but also good for your mind to just take a breath. Um, Make sure you are doing enjoyable activities. So, you know, you gotta do school, but also do some fun things. Make sure you're just having a good time when you can. Um, use social media in healthy ways. We all know how to do that by now. Don't get drawn into conversations and drama if you don't have to. Um, be gentle with yourself. Very important. Don't let your thoughts snowball. Um, so this means you have a small s snowball and it's just one little worry. Like I won't get my assignment done on time. But that makes you nervous. So you have another nervous thought on top of it. So the snowball gets bigger. I won't have time to hang out with my friends because I'll have to work on that assignment. So then something else gets bigger. I won't have time to sleep because I'll be trying to fit in time with my friends because I'm trying to complete my assignment on time. And then the snowball just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger until you have a huge pile of snow and you don't know what to do with it. There's nothing you can do because there's so much. So the best thing you can do is to deal with one thing at a time, just one small step at a time. And then the snowball never gets huge. Think about what you can do instead of what you can't do. We all know there are things that we can't do right now. And yes, that's sad and annoying. And you can acknowledge that. But if sports are canceled, maybe you can practice at home, building those skills 
so that when the time comes to pra practice your sports again, you are so good. Um, if music class is canceled, practice at home as much as you'd like to. And then when it's time to show people how good you are at whatever instrument you play, your teachers are going to think you're the next Mozart. If you love doing things like coordinating your outfits with your friends, just because you're not in school right now doesn't mean you can't do that. So it would still be super fun to see you and your friends in your um, classroom, your virtual classroom, all matching. I would love that. All right. So these are some self-care things that we can do to quiet our monkey minds. The next thing we can do is stick to a routine. It's really important for your well-being to make sure that you know what's going to happen every day. Um, get some exercise every day. Doesn't have to be a huge amount of exercise. Just get your body moving a little bit. Go to bed at a reasonable time every night. I know you don't have to get up early and get dressed and get to the school bus and all that, but it's still a good idea to go to bed at a normal time because that is taking care of your body. Um, eat healthy food most of the time, but occasionally give yourself something yummy. Um, spend time outside. Make sure you bring your mask, hand sanitizer, sunscreen, and bug spray. If you can, wake up a few minutes early every day to give yourself time to adjust to the day. So you can just lay in bed and think about something cool that's gonna happen sometime soon, or get up and do some stretching before you have to sit down for a few hours. Um, just check in with yourself. You can keep a journal. If you like keeping journals, there are some cool ways to do it. Um, you can do a dream journal. You can do a bullet journal. You can do something I love, which is a mood tracker or feelings tracker journal. And you can just Google feelings tracker journal ideas, um, and you'll find all kinds. So this is one that I saw. You're gonna draw a picture without any color and then label each object in the picture with the date for each day of the month. So I have one through 30 here and every day, and you have a key down here to show you what the different colors mean. Super sad, kind of sad, meh, all right and happy. So um, each day at the end of the day, you will color in. Okay, so on the first day of the month, I was feeling super sad. On the second day of the month, I was also feeling super sad. On the third day, I felt a little bit better. Fourth day, I was really happy. And so on and so on, until at the end of the month, you have a beautiful picture of how you were feeling throughout the month. So this is one example. This one's a little bit simpler. It's really just some circles and you make whatever kind of face you're feeling inside. This one I really like, it's raindrops. Again, you have your key at the bottom to tell you what the different colors mean. So there's all different kinds of these. Really easy to make or just print out. Okay. So that was keeping a routine. Next, social issues. All right, so sometimes people don't like being on camera. You're gonna spend a lot of time on camera, right? In your classrooms. So in order to feel better about that, just practice. Um, you can practice with someone in your house if you both have devices where you can, you know, do a Zoom meeting or Facebook Messenger or something like that. Um, you could do it with friends. You can even try doing it with your dog. Your dog might care about what you have to say. 
Um, and you could do it with yourself. You could just watch yourself in your camera and see how you look when you're talking. So you know what you look like to other people. Um, all right, so it's been hard to maintain friendships through this whole process. But now that you're gonna be in school again, you might wanna work on maintaining those friendships and making new friends also um, through safe activities and virtual meetups. So play games online, um, safe outdoor activities, things like that. Okay, this is really important. Tell your friends how you're feeling. They are probably feeling the same way, or at least some of the same things you're feeling, even if they don't wanna talk about it. So don't force them to talk about it. Just know that they're probably feeling the same way because we're all going through this together, aren't we? Um, when participating in or overhearing conversations about intense subjects, things that are going on in the world, maybe things you care about a whole lot. If you feel like you just can't do it, just give yourself permission to back out of that conversation, at least at that moment. Don't don't take on everybody's feelings if you're already feeling nervous. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about safety. Okay. How do I know I'll be safe when it's time to go back into a school building? I want you to trust that the adults around you are making good decisions about your safety. They are thinking and planning and researching all of the options and making sure that you are safe. Trust that they know what to do. Review your school's policies so you know exactly what to expect and what is safe. So if your school asks you to wear a mask, wear a mask. If your school asks you to have hand sanitizer on your um, in your pocket at all times, make sure you have it. Um, be prepared with your PPE and practice excellent hygiene. You're washing your hands all the time. If you can't get to soap and water, you're using hand sanitizer. You're not coughing. And if you have to cough, you know, you're doing this thing, even if you're wearing a mask, you all know this. What should I do if I don't feel safe? So if you don't feel safe going back to school, but you have to, you can do what's called gradual exposure. So you can start by just visiting the sidewalk outside the parking lot of your school. And the next day you can start, um, you can venture a little bit further and go into the parking lot itself. Take a walk around. Do that a few days in a row. And then maybe by the next day, you'll be able to walk up the steps. And then maybe by the time it's the day that you have to go back to school, maybe you'll feel a bit better. Talk to adults if you're feeling unsafe. Explain why you're feeling unsafe. They may be able to help you. And explore your options. Um, Maybe you don't have to go back to school. Maybe that is um, an option that some people take and some people don't take. What should I do if I feel sick? Don't panic. Tell a grown up, whoever is closest, teacher, nurse, parent, 
caregiver doctor. If they tell you to get a test, go get your test. If they tell you to self-isolate, self-isolate. Make sure you get plenty of rest and water. And just try to relax until you're better. There are lots of reasons why you might be feeling sick. So you just get through it. Remember, tell people how you are feeling. Another thing we wanna do is maintain interests. So probably over the summer through quarantine, You weren't able to do a lot of the things that you're interested in. You weren't able to participate in a lot of activities. And not being able to do something for a while makes it harder to get motivated to do it again. It's like you got stuck in mud and you'd love to get out and start walking again, but your shoe's kind of stuck. So you gotta give it a nudge. Um, and that's not your fault. If you're not motivated to do things, that's not your fault. Um, everybody's feeling that. So be understanding with yourself, but give yourself a gentle push to do some safe activities. Start with something brief. That's not going to be overwhelming. Do something away from where you do your schoolwork. So you're out of this place that you are spending a lot of time in. Um, Go somewhere where you feel calm or cozy. If you love reading, read something that's not for school. If you love being with your friends, make plans to do a safe activity. If you love making things, gather all of your supplies ahead of time so that when you have a free moment, you can just go and get started. If you love gaming, work time into your schedule to play online with your friends. If you love music, find your earbuds wherever you left them and listen to music while you're studying. And finally, there are some books that can help you get through your anxiety as well. If you go to our website, bcpl.info, and search for teen workbooks, you'll find a whole list of really cool books that can help with a variety of topics, a lot of them are something to do with anxiety. Put those on hold and then you can pick them up with our curbside service Monday through Saturday from 10 to 3. Um, There are also some great fiction books about characters with anxiety and I will post those as well. So To recap, it's totally normal to be feeling anxious right now. There are lots of tools you can use to help quiet your monkey mind, like self-care, routine, social activities, taking care of your safety, maintaining interests, and finding books and other resources to help. I hope that this has helped you feel a little bit better about starting school. And remember, just talk to somebody about how you're feeling. Thanks for listening.